Hiroshima and Nagasaki Journeys to Peace. This is our presentation to commemorate the anniversary of the Hiroshima and Nagasaki bombing in Japan. We want to start this presentation in English, and then we have another presentation that is going to be in Spanish later today. La presentación en español será más tarde en este mismo canal. On August 6, 1945, Hiroshima was attacked by the U.S. That day, an atomic bomb was dropped on the city and destroyed the city and killed more than 100,000 people with a direct impact on the days after the attack. On August 9, 1945, Nagasaki was also attacked with a plutonium bomb, and that attack forced Japan to end World War II. Today we want to show you a little bit of what happened to those cities, specifically Hiroshima, but we want to concentrate this presentation on the recovery of the city, of what are the city today, our journey to Hiroshima Park and Museum, and how these cities became modern, active, prosperous cities in Japan. These are images from the museum that we visit during the World Scout Jamboree in 2015. And we're going to show you later more details about our visit. But here you can see how was Hiroshima before and after. But today Hiroshima, as I mentioned, is a great city, very modern, streets, bridges, buildings, and they have shown the world that you are able to recover from the ashes and became again another city. Why am I doing this? Well, in my early professional years, I went to MIT, the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, and finished with a master degree in nuclear engineer and an advanced nuclear engineer degree. I went back to Venezuela and became the head of the only nuclear research reactor that we have in this country. And I became the youngest head of a nuclear reactor because when I went to a conference in Europe, I find out that the Latin American country has the youngest head of the nuclear reactors. It was a huge responsibility to uh, manage a research reactor with scientists, a lot of research assistants that were looking for peaceful uses of the nuclear energy. At that time, I was also exploring nuclear energy as a resource for um, electricity. And also I discovered the nuclear effects of nuclear weapons. It was a sad part of the knowledge that I wanted to see how to move forward with those um, parts, with those parts of the nuclear engineering degree that I was not too positive about. I discovered some military uses that we tried to use uh, non-destructive testing into some small weapons and ammunition, and then I decided I want to move forward into other areas of green energies or non-proliferation nuclear weapons, and um, use these degrees, this knowledge, to cover other areas of communications, the internet, and information technology. And this is why when I became a leader of the scouting movement, the Boy Scouts of America, 
I decided to be part of the Messenger of Peace, and I decided to be part of the scouts that see the world in a different way. We try to enjoy nature, rivers, lakes, all the possibilities of being outdoors. And then all this, after many years, took me to Japan. I was a leader in the World Scout Jamboree of a Boy Scout of America troop, and we went to Japan. Part of the experience in the Jamboree was to do side trips to, con to, to the countryside, to cities, to caves, to many areas outside the campsite that was a, very useful to know more about the country, to know more about the culture and how people went. But the top side trip that we had was to Hiroshima Peace Program in the Hiroshima Museum and Park, Memorial Park. We arrived a few days before August 6th. That was the commemoration of the atomic bombings. When we arrived, the first thing that we did was to go to the Hiroshima Peace Memorial Museum, where we had the opportunity to see a lot of drawings, a lot of pictures, a lot of uh, reports, um, things that were born during the attacks. This display of the city of Hiroshima with the globe, a red globe of the area where the, the bomb was dropped. And the scouts were uh, very impacted by this uh, visit. They saw images that we don't want to remember. And then they went to a place to write messages, messages of peace, messages to the survivors, messages to the leaders of the world, messages to other children around the world, telling them why peace is important, why the scouting movement should work toward peace. And, and this is how we spend the day. After finishing the messages, we went to the store and we found these stickers and we bought almost all of them. We want to, to take this No More Hiroshima as a slogan, as a motto, to move on after this visit. Um, we want to use this slogan, this motto, uh, to continue pursuing peace, telling everybody No More Hiroshima. This is why we started collecting these uh, stickers. Then we went to the huge auditorium, a conference center, where we had the opportunity to participate in the center of the Hiroshima Peace Program. In the big scenario, we had uh, readings. The people uh, went to the stage to read let letters of survivors of the atomic bombing, and also letters of the messages that are sent by children to the survivors and to the authorities. It was a very moving ceremony. We were uh, sharing real letters. Then we went to an area where we have uh, the opportunity to learn to build the origami crane. The origami crane is a symbol of peace. And we want to talk later um, how to do the origami cranes and why the origami crane became a symbol for children and peace around the world. The, you see the, the hats that uh, all the, the people have there, the staff of the program. And at the end of the program, well, I uh, was talking to them, taking pictures, and I told them that I, I would like to have this hat to show it in my presentations, in my talks, and here in the recording of these talks, because uh, I think it's important to keep the Hiroshima Peace Program alive. 
Very well. Um, we finished the, um, the part of the program and then we went to visit the park. When we see the park, uh, we were given a, a guide with all the parts of the component of the park. And this is the cenotaph where they have like a memorial for all the victims of the bombings in Hiroshima. And this is where every August 6th, the dignitaries uh, come to uh, commemorate this day. They come here with flowers, speeches, and they renew the call for non-nuclear weapons, for peace. And this is why for us was uh, very important to, to visit the park and spend the day there and understand what happened. In the picture at the end, you see the, the atomic dome that was uh, one building that survived the attacks and is now a symbol of the city. And this is the children, the origami uh, area where the origami cranes are in display. And the history tells the uh, a child called Sadako Sisaki was two years old when the atomic bomb drop was dropped in the city. She survived the attack, but they, after a few years, she developed leukemia. And they, she was told that if she built 1,000 cranes, paper cranes, they, they, she would be healthy again. So unfortunately, she died, but the children of her school continue doing the origami cranes. And they, what they do is they put the origami cranes together and they build uh, with a thread all these uh, pieces of cranes, one after the other. And the, these cranes are uh, later in display in, in this monument. You see that at the bottom of the monument, there is a, a big rock that gives you an indication of what happened of why uh, people are doing this. And people deposit their own origami, origami cranes uh, on the floor. And they also have this place where uh, the people that donate the origami cranes uh, deliver them to, to this place. This is another view of the cenotaph where the monument for the victim is located. And in, in, in uh, aligned with the cenotaph and the A dome is the eternal flame that is also always there. And they say that the, the flame will be continually there until all atomic bombs are destroyed in the world. This is our hope. This is a view of the A dome, the atomic uh, building, the, the, the atomic the building that survived the attack. Uh, fr fr you can see it from the park, and it's across the river. And this is a, another view of uh, where you see the the ruins of the building next to new buildings. So you always remember what happened in this city. The scouts were there. We were very moved with the, the visit. And we were talking about peace. And these are scouts from Colombia that are also, uh, that were, at that time, they were having a, a peace process uh, with the local guerrillas. And they were very also concerned about the peace in the world. There is another part of the park that is the Peace Bell. The Peace Bell have a, a bell, and when you strike the bell, uh, it means that uh, we want the world to go back to 100% peace. They have an engraved world with no boundaries, signifying that we are only one world with no boundaries. And you see here the scouts uh, ringing the bell. Uh, this is a very moving uh, moment for our scouts. Then when I finished the visit and finished the jamboree, I decided to start doing what I'm doing today. 
sharing my experience in Japan, sharing what I, I learned there in, in Japan, in, in the Hiroshima uh, Park, uh, showing to everybody the stickers, the stickers of No More Hiroshima, uh, showing uh, how we learn to say peace and love and beautiful words in Japanese. Uh, and this is uh, some of the experiences that we have, plus exchanging stamps, exchanging uh, things, gifts with the scarf there. Uh, this is a, a sample, this is my, my scarf there. We normally exchange a scarf or neckerchief with other scarves of the world. This is the only one I left in the United States because I have five to exchange. So, and I have one from Mexico, Taiwan, Spain, other countries. That was very interesting. And also, well, we, we, we came with some different kind of uh, memorabilia. In this case, you see the crane, uh, the paper crane, uh, the fabric, the Japanese. Uh, uh, we brought one of the happy, um, this is like a robe, and all, also other scene from Japan. And then those days, I started in the university to commemorate the 70th anniversary doing a program that we call Origami Cranes for Peace. During those days, we taught how to do the origami crane. We have professors and some students doing the, the cranes. Um, we have also, you see, several displays in Japanese, uh, the, the symbol of the red globe that symbolized the, the bomb. We were focusing on the future. So we use this uh, diagram of how to make the origami cranes, how to, to convert a regular piece of paper into this uh, beautiful crane. Uh, today you only have blue and white, but you can use any kind of paper, any origami or any uh, magazine to do the cranes. And this is samples that, of the cranes that we did in, the, in Japan and later in the Florida State College a Jacksonville program. I did this program several opportunities for the students in my classes. And you can see that we finished with all the cranes. Uh, we put them in display in different places. Um, and, and this is how I, I show the same that I have today. A small display of Japanese uh, things. So to create awareness about the peace process about uh, no more Hiroshima. We also did a uh, origami PVC display that we put it in the hallway in the college. It took us uh, like a week to build it. And then later we, we, we display our paper cranes on this uh, PVC piece. It's very easy to make. So, um, but it was uh, funny to, to, to use these resources to remember the good part. We also, in another opportunity, um, we create a disposable mural. This is a masking tape, blue masking tape. The, we create the word piece. We use the um, crane on the wall to display the, the crane. We, we also taught how to make organic cranes in that day. But uh, we went beyond the experience in Hiroshima to learn more about Nagasaki. We didn't have the opportunity to go to Nagasaki, so I decided to, to learn more about Nagasaki. And what happened was that I went to Javier. Javier is a town in Spain that has the Basilica of Francisco Javier, that is a priest that went to Japan to Spain the Christianism there. And uh, when I was visiting the, the church, I was asking the, the priest, hey, do you have a stamp? I would like to have a stamp on my visit to, to put it in, in, my, in my book. Like when you go to Camino de Santiago, James Way, other places, uh, I have this as a, as a journal. So I went to the, to the, to the church, to the office, 
and I saw all the relics of Francisco Javier. It was very interesting. And I asked the, the, the father, oh, Japan. I was in Japan, I told him. But no in Nagasaki, I went also to Hiroshima. It was very sad. And then he said, uh, are you familiar with the Virgin, with the burned Virgin? He said, no. Uh, what happened? Well, when Nagasaki was destroyed, the church was destroyed, but this part of the Virgin, Nagasaki was destroyed, but this head of the Virgin survived with no eyes and a burn of the face so that people remember what happened those days. And that head of the Virgin is still in the Basilica there in Nagasaki. It was very interesting, very moving to add Nagasaki to my presentations. This is the, the plaza they have in, in Nagasaki, the memorial piece in Nagasaki. Uh, I have not been there yet, but I was able to, to find this uh, picture to show you the, the center where the bomb was dropped. And also inside the museum, they have a museum for peace, where they emphasize on the non-proliferation of nuclear weapons. They want us to be uh, weapons-free, and they have this display where they symbolize the amount of nuclear weapons that cover the earth. Well, um, we found different ways to, to, to display what we were doing, and we use uh, uh, story maps, the Argy story map that we have been using for cultural routers, for my port, for my classes. Uh, it's a tool that my students are using. So I decided to do a Hiroshima Peace Memorial Park uh, story map. And this is the cover that we use. Then um, we show the map. Uh, a display of the highlights of the 65 monuments they have there in the park, but we show the one that we went, uh, some of the most significant ones. Uh, we also took the, the map of the memorial guide uh, and saw the, the, the places they recommend you to visit if you don't have time to, to go back in another day. You want to see all of this in one day. And all this is uh, very easy to, to walk. Well, this is uh, our scout. I have pictures on the map showing uh, what we did. when we went to the museum to, uh, to see the display. This is another part because I already told you, show you uh, photos inside the museum. I don't want to do it again, so you already have the photos, but we shared some of the photos inside the museum. But uh, we also add some of the pictures that we did not have. For example, the prayer for peace statue that is a, it's a mom uh, praying for peace. And we were able to see also a lot of Japanese scouts. During the day that we went in Hiroshima, we all have a demonstration. There were people there demonstrating against nuclear weapons. I was told that this is almost every day where the people demonstrate. They cannot enter the park to do demonstration. They do it in the public parts of the city. That is the bridge, the bridge that connects to the other side of the river. On August 6, remember that we went to the Hiroshima a few days before, but in August 6, during the Jamboree, we have a, a memorial uh, day where we have commemorate the, the attacks. We pray for peace. We pray for the victims. And what is important that we were more than 150 countries there uh, doing this activity. And it was uh, very interesting to see, especially uh, a scouter from Japan. We were shaking hands and taking pictures together, remember, remembering that that happened that day doesn't mean that we are now uh, not going to be friends. We are friends. Uh, Japan recovered from the, the war. Today, we are one of the close allies of the United States is Japan, and we have a great friendship. While I'm doing this presentation, there are scouts in South Korea doing the World Scout Jamboree. They are, they are now leaving 
the camp because uh, the weather condition is not really good right now. But I hope that we can continue uh, sending scouts to world or regional scout jamboree because it's a way to continue with the Messenger of Peace program. Well, that day I did a, a, a several videos. Some of the videos were done by uh, a local New York journalist. The videos are no longer on YouTube, but more or less said the same thing that I am sharing in my talks. Uh, it was uh, very interesting to do the, the videos in English and Spanish uh, because I was there and I was very impacted by what I saw. As a nuclear engineer, for me, it was a, a very profound moment to discover that some of the things I learned were not uh, for peace. And I want to emphasize that part because nuclear energy is still used in the world. The peaceful uses of nuclear energy are very well known, but we really want to erase, delete that part that are um, for destruction. It's like a knife. A knife can kill a person, but a knife is just good to cook. Fire in scouting, we said fire can destroy a forest, but fire is used to, for cooking. So let's emphasize in the positive use of the nuclear energy or the nuclear investigation, research, and nuclear medicine, um, forget the destruction that can be created by nuclear weapons. Well, but this is what happened. I want to show you what's going on today. Uh, according to several sources, you can see more or less what's going on in the world in terms of nuclear warhead inventory. What countries have them? Everybody knows. And what country has them that they don't deny, they don't agree, but these are numbers. And we would like to eliminate these numbers. You see here a, another display of what countries have nuclear weapons. You can see different sources. You can search in the internet and find different groups of scientists and organizations that are tracking these numbers. There is a nuclear weapon ban monitor that you can follow and you can see how uh, people are creating awareness to these countries, how uh, the countries that are now in war can create a situation that can be very, very dangerous for the rest of the countries. We have been following uh, after Hiroshima program, other organizations that are continuing doing this activities like Hiroshima for Global Peace. We joined this group and we are watching their documents, their courses, their videos, because it's a way to learn how to be more active for this uh, cause. Of course, we continue praying. Praying is a very important component of our spiritual life as a person. And we need to ask for God for peace. And we want to be sure that we follow organizations that are praying for peace. So you can have uh, the Hiroshima Peace Tourism place, have uh, the peace tourism, they take you to Hiroshima, etc. But what is interesting is that they look at different aspects of the visit to Hiroshima. They want to, the people to be impacted like I did. Well, uh, you see what we can visit in the city of Hiroshima, what are the, the places related to the bombings, but also what are the places that are created to the reconstruction and the recovery of a city. Of course, we always continue with the cranes for our future. This is our new program that is delivering hope. This is a good activity for children, a good activity for small groups, an activity that is easy to relate the, the crane to what happened in Japan. We continue doing these uh, programs. We continue our journey. I hope that we can uh, have a better world. This is part of the scouting experience. We want 
to continue our journeys to peace, delivering these programs, showing you what can be done to have a world without nuclear weapons. Remember what we want, no more Hiroshima's.